good morning everybody this is mike with on point preparedness a little bit of a off schedule live stream doing it here almost uh, 7 45 in the morning eastern standard time but wanted to do this before i took the dog on the walk and before all the kids woke up it's a short little teaching i think it's an important teaching because we're all sort of guilty of this at some point or many points in our walk and uh, it's all about judgment particularly you judging other Christians, you judging or disciplining your own children, and particularly I wanted to focus on the measure with which we judge or discipline. Because there's a lot of Bible studies and teachings on are Christians to judge one another, yes or no, but not a whole lot regarding the measure with which we judge. So I just wanted to take a quick look at that. And again, for me, uh, this this really relates um, to some of my misgivings, things that I need to work on, and I'm sure it's also going to convict people as well um, to help straighten out our walk. So let me go on over here to the screen share and just share, share with, uh, with you what I have today. And again, this is all about not provoking other people and brothers and sisters in Christ, trying not to provoke them to anger with the judgment and discipline that we should rightfully be giving out. So we're going to start in Matthew chapter 7, verses 1 through 6. And again, this is just all about judging, the fact that you should rightfully judge. This doesn't say that you shouldn't judge at all. It's all about rightful judgment. It says, judge not that you be not judged. For with the judgment you pronounce, you will be judged. Okay, And, and this is the important part, and with the measure you use it, it will be measured to you. Now it goes on to say, why are you judging the speck in your brother's eye, but you don't notice the log that's in your own eye? And it says that First, take the log out of your own eye, then you will be able to see clearly to take the speck out of your brother's eye. And so again, it says, don't judge with hypocrisy. You know, it's not saying don't judge at all. It just says, don't judge with hypocrisy. I'm not going to spend a whole lot of time on whether Christians are to judge or not. Um, I just want to just lightly touch on it here. We are supposed to judge one another within the church. And within the church only. We're not to judge anyone else that's of the world. And particularly in both these verse, uh, both these segments of verses that I have here, Matthew chapter 7, verses 1 through 6, and the one that we're going to get to, 1 Corinthians chapter 5, verse 12, both of them talk about not judging the world. Um, see here in Matthew 7, 6, it says, Do not give dogs what is holy, and do not throw your pearls before pigs, lest they trample them underfoot and turn to attack you. Again, so it's like you have... You should be having a rightful judgment. Don't give that out to the world. They're just going to trample it. Um, and also, 1 Corinthians chapter 5, it says, What do I have to do with judging outsiders? Nothing. Is it not those inside the church whom you are to judge? So again, just two quick segments of verses, which really point to the fact that, yes, Christians are to rightfully not in, hypo in hypocrisy, rightfully judge one another within the church and not judge those outside the church. So if you want to learn more about that, there's a 30-minute video that I did 30 minutes or <laughs> three years ago. It's 30 minutes long. Are Christians to judge one another? You can check that out for more information. But particularly in this teaching, I really wanted to focus on this segment with the judgment that you pronounce what type of measure are you using? So I just want to highlight, <laughs> you know, we're, we're walking through this walk and <clears throat> sometimes we don't know if we're in error. You know, the maybe we're committing a sin and it's an ignorance. And so I've talked about it before that, you know, if, if you know, you feel like there might be some, some sins of ignorance, if you will, in your life, uh, you know, I, I say to God, you know, please, Lord, reveal things to me that aren't in accordance with your will. You know, if, if I'm too blind to see them myself, please, please let me see them. Please reveal them to me so that I can correct myself. 
Um, but similarly with that prayer, I've, I've prayed to the Lord on occasion, especially if like bad things are happening. Uh, it might just be a test from the Lord, but it might be in a form of discipline. And I've prayed to the Lord, Lord, if I'm an error, please be gentle with your correction. Um, we see we see all different measures of correction all throughout the Bible. You know, very stern types of judgment. So if you remember in Acts, there were two people that were withholding money um, from the church, and it was specifically against um, the Holy Spirit, and they were they were they were holding it back and and lying about holding back money, and essentially their judgment was death. Uh, the both the husband and the wife fell dead before the apostles when they were questioned about withholding money and they denied it and they fell dead and you say wow that's a really strict form of judgment and you, see, you see that type of judgment and then you see more lighter ones but again there's a range and so I always I always pray to the Lord you know please be gentle with your correction uh, if I'm in error and so in relation to that, and Matthew chapter 7, this verse that I have highlighted here, you know, we really want to be gently corrected um, by the Lord. And I think similarly, we want to be gently corrected by brothers and sisters in Christ as well. And so the measure with which you judge or discipline, again, Scripture says that's coming back over the fence. With the measure that you use, it's going to be measured back to you. And so, you know, there's this applies both to spiritual children or spiritual brothers and sisters in the Lord, but also if you're a father or a mother and you have children, this is how you judge or discipline your own children. Uh, some of us can be a little too harsh at times, and we'll look at what scriptures say with regards to that. But as I referenced in some of my prior videos about farming and things like that, there's a lot of things that the Lord teaches us in the physical which have spiritual implications. So a lot of what I'm going to teach on today regarding your own children, your own biological children, whether you're a father or a mother, it also applies to spiritual children, those whom you're discipling, those whom you're raising up in Christ, or spiritual brothers and sisters in Christ. So again, we... We want to make sure that we use the right measure. It doesn't mean we have to gently correct everyone and always have, you know, padded gloves on and treat everyone like kids. Sometimes there's very stern rebuke, sometimes reproval, sometimes something very gentle. You just have to know the situation and the right measure, which I'll get to in a little bit as well. So again, thinking about our correction um, and, and our judgment or our discipline. Um, let's just look at it with regards to children, because that's really what's been on my heart. You know, sometimes I'm I'm not um, I'm not as gentle as I, I should be with like corrections. Sometimes I might be too hard on my kids. So first and foremost, this applies to both spiritual children and physical children. I want to highlight Galatians chapter four nineteen where Paul says, My little children, for whom I am again in the anguish of childbirth until Christ is formed in you. Again, he's calling people that are not literally his biological children, his spiritual children. So this applies to both. Here's the, the really main verses of this teaching. Ephesians chapter 6, 4. Fathers, oops, get it on the screen here so I don't cover it up with my pip. Fathers, do not provoke your children to anger, but bring them up in the discipline and instruction of the Lord. So don't provoke your children to be angry. Now your children may be angry. <laughs> you know, whenever you discipline a kid, they're never going to like it. But there, there is something a father or mother can contribute in terms of them rising up in anger. And it's all about are you using the right measure in your discipline towards them. Uh, Colossians chapter 3, verses 20 through 21, really parallels uh, what we just read in Ephesians and says, Children, obey your parents in everything, for this pleases the Lord. Fathers, do not provoke your children. So then we see the same thing. Do not provoke, do not provoke, lest they become discouraged. And so, 
this is an error that I've made. I'm sure lots of people have made this again, not only to your physical children, but potentially spiritual children or brothers and sisters in the Lord that you're trying to instruct. Sometimes you use a measure that's way too strong and two negative things can come about from that. They just want to give up. They're like, I can never do right in this person's eyes. I am just always failing. Or they get angry or both. Angry and discouraged because of an improper use of measure with regards to discipline and instruction. And so talk about conviction. And I said in the beginning of this video, I think we've all been guilty of this one or many times or, or constantly <laughs> uh, with regards to our walk. And you know that includes like unreasonable yelling, um, the severity with which you discipline. And, and this can just, you know, I'm not talking about physical discipline, but just in like verbal, getting angry. Uh, if, you, if you're being impatient with brothers and sisters in Christ or your physical children versus instead of like always having this rebuking type of tone, is it more with a good measure like you're reproving them, you're counseling them, you're having patience when they make errors. Um, again, there still are times for rebuke, but you have to know when. So just for an example, if you haven't seen these two videos, I did one three years ago and another one five months ago, uh, Moses and the Rock. And, you know, one of Moses, he, he struck um, the, the congregation. They wanted water. And so God told Moses to strike the, the rock and it will bring forth water. And Moses struck the rock and it didn't bring forth water. And he got angry at the situation with the congregation and just perhaps of why the, the rock wasn't giving water. And then he struck it a second time. And with regards to that second strike, then it gave forth water. But as a punishment, uh, the Lord said, you will die and you will not reach the promised land. And so, again, that's a very severe punishment. But there's um, two very things, two very important things to note about that. One is, you know, Moses was a high teacher. Like he, he was talking to the Lord face to face. And so with him having that close of a relationship to the Lord and, and that type of stature with regards to his presidings over the people of Israel, you know, something that might seem minor to many of us uh, was um, you know, very much a, a big thing, a big sin against the Lord. And so there was a higher judgment. Many of you know this verse, uh, James chapter 3, verse 1, Not many of you should become teachers, my brother, brothers, for you know that we who teach will be judged with greater strictness. So again, those who are really invested in the Lord, elders, people that know the ways of the Lord, like Moses, you know, he is very close to the Lord. They will be judged with a different strictness. And really not just from the Lord himself, but you know, teachers in general from from the body of Christ, you know, every single word that a teacher says out to the congregation or to the public you know, people are looking at it and, and judging it. Like, is this right or is this wrong? And if a teacher even has like, you know, minor errors, there is a greater strict strictness of judgment that comes on the teacher from believers, from brothers and sisters in Christ, because it's, it's that position. And so, you know, with me and, and doing like Bible studies and teachings on YouTube, that's one of the things that I experience very much is, yes, um, you know, I will be, judge with greater strictness from the Lord, but you know, he also uses brothers and sisters in the Christ, brothers and sisters in Christ to judge me more strictly because of the position and the basically the gravity or um, the consequence of if I say wrong things out to a large group of people, you know, I am under a heavier weight, so to say. But so like with with teachers, with elders, uh, like in the example with Moses, if there's people that really know the ways of the Lord and they're going astray, sometimes there is a stern rebuke 
and sometimes you know a great punishment but we all have to use the right level of measure with regards to what type of sin it is that you're you're judging someone with um, how far are they along in their walk because again you start off judging harshly a new believer and most definitely there's a chance that they can become discouraged and they can become angry and you're going to have you know a completely opposite effect than what you intended uh, think about it with your own children I, us with children we know that uh, sometimes they just it actually encourages them to even rebel further uh, so uh, continuing on let's look at how Paul and how the scriptures talk about how we should really be judging more in a loving sense than, again, with the quote-unquote rod. So in 1 Corinthians chapter 4, it says, Some are arrogant, as though I were not coming to you, but I will come to you soon, if the Lord wills. And I will find out not the talk of these arrogant people, but their power, for the kingdom of God does not consist in talk, but in power. What do you wish? Shall I come to you with a rod or with love and a spirit of gentleness? Well, of course, nobody wants the rod. No one wants that measure of discipline. We would all rather have us be corrected with a spirit of gentleness. Or in 2 Corinthians chapter 13, For this reason I write these things while I am away from you, that when I come, I may not have to be severe in my use of authority that the Lord has given me for building up and not for tearing down. So again, don't want to be severe in my use of authority. I can judge and I can discipline severely, but no one wants that. Paul doesn't want that, and I know you don't want that. Verse Timothy chapter 5, same thing. Do not rebuke an older man, but encourage him as you would a father, younger men as brothers, older women as mothers, younger women as sisters, in all purity. 2 Timothy chapter 2, And the Lord's servant must not be quarrelsome, but kind to everyone, able to teach, patiently enduring evil, correcting his opponents with gentleness. God may perhaps grant them repentance leading to a knowledge of the truth and they may come to their senses and escape the snare of the devil after being captured by him to do his will and first corinthians chapter 13 if i speak in the tongues of men of angels but do not have love i am a noisy gong or clanging cymbal so about this you know there's i've seen it on some youtube channels as well as you know in social media there there are people that will say brother Sister, you were deceived. And they'll, they'll go into like, you know, how, how they're all deceived and things like that. And if you like go right off the bat and say, hey, you're deceived. Those are like Christian fighting words. <laughs> you know, like people start posturing like I'm deceived. What? You know, there's there's a different way to talk with someone and lead them out of error. Um, and it's, you know, it's it's just you want to be careful with your words unless, again, you know this person, they've, they've been in the Lord for quite some time, maybe they have a particular position of authority, you know, then you've really just got to gauge what measure of judgment or what measure of discipline you're giving out. Um, but again, we, we don't want to provoke to anger and we don't want people to come become discouraged because uh, especially with that part about becoming discouraged, you know, there, you have to think about some people's walk, like, <clears throat> when it talks about salvation and, you know, the people that the Lord chooses, uh, you know, there's verses paraphrasing that the Lord chooses people that have been rejected by the world, people that have really gone through like a lot of suffering or just rejected, um, and, and they turn to the Lord um, because, you know, they're, they're seeking solace, they're seeking peace, um, and they're, they're trying to seek out salvation and the meaning of life. And so, you know, people that are just coming to the Lord and they've you know, gone through a lot of troubles, you know, they've been rejected over and over and over. You know, they come to the Christian body and then they start getting immediately judged. That's very discouraging. Very, very discouraging. And so we need to know how to raise children. 
Uh, and again, that's that's one of the beautiful things about Scripture is the Lord uses all sorts of examples in the physical to teach us spiritual principles, just like farming. There's a whole bunch of things that happen in farming that were to teach people how to act or how to do the Lord's will spiritually. Same thing with raising your children. There's all sorts of errors that I've made. There's things that I've seen how my children respond to certain things that I say or do. And I realize that there's a spiritual implication in that as well with how I try to teach someone about biblical concepts, how I reprove someone, how I counsel someone, how I rebuke someone. So these things are all meant to teach us um, so that may, we may be mature in our thinking. So one of the last things I want to make mention with this, again, first, right measure, try not to provoke people to anger, try not to you know, discourage people, use the right measure, not only for their sake, but for your sake. Because as we started this, Matthew chapter 7 says, the judgment that you give and the measure with which you give it, that's going to be measured back to you. So if you want to be treated gently in your corrections from the Lord, and we're all going to be corrected throughout our walk, make no doubt about it. The Lord's saying, what you want to have happen to you, make sure that you have the grace and the right measure with which you give to other people, other brothers and sisters in the Lord. Um, but I do want to highlight just one one last teaching. Uh, I, I really enjoy this one, and I suggest you watch it if you haven't. It's called Unclothe, the Biblical Typology of Nakedness. So what, what does it really mean? So in the physical, there's tons of examples about you know um, certain prophets being naked. You know, the Lord tells them to walk around naked. You know, it sounds very strange unless you understand what the spiritual implications are. Um, and so looking at those physical examples, there's a spiritual aspect of nakedness where someone is exposed with their impurity, their sins. And in this example, I show how there's there's a lot of teachers, particularly on YouTube, and I have many brothers and sisters in the faith that are Baptists and that are Reformed, but you know, particularly I've, I've noticed a lot of like Reformed YouTube teachers that will just mock false teachers. Now, we should definitely call out false teachers. Um, there's, there's some really, really far out there ones, like Kat Kerr, if you've seen her, she's the lady that makes a lot of predictions, or not even predictions, but she says that like she's seen, she, she goes to heaven all the time, and she sees celebrities, and all, I mean, just really far out there stuff. She has bright pink hair, so absolutely a false teacher, and it is very easy to make fun of her and to make fun of her, everything that she's trying to teach people, but we shouldn't be mocking her. We shouldn't be making fun of her. We should say, you are a false teacher. You will be judged by the Lord. You're not in the body of Christ. You're cast out of the body of Christ. You have a completely different gospel, but we shouldn't make fun of her in her spiritual nakedness because not not for not for her sake and but there are people that legitimately follow her and believe in her and you know these channels that are making fun of her they're really catering to their own audience people that already know the truth and everyone's having a good laugh at her expense is it really changing the hearts and minds of her followers? Because they're going to look at all the mockery and all the laughing um, from the people that are exposing her. And it might be rightful exposure, but it's done in an incorrect measure. It's done in a, in a mocking manner. They're going to say, look at this persecution. You know, Kat Kerr is on the right path. And, you know, the Lord said persecution would come. And look at all these mockers. Again, you're not changing the hearts and minds of people that are deceived and, and falling under her snare. But if you you know, have a stern rebuke of her, but you truthfully present it in love and say, I'm trying to you know, lead you people out of this, and here's all the reasons why she's in error, and it definitely comes off loving, and in, you know, you're speaking to the other people in a spirit of gentleness, please come out from under this snare. You know, perhaps the Lord will lead them to repentance. So, 
again, we, we have to be careful with the measure with which we use judgment. Uh, in some cases, for the sake of the person, because we want them to come to repentance. We don't want them to become discouraged. We don't want them to become angry. We also judge rightfully, and we do it in right measure for ourselves, because we also want to be you know, judged with right measure from the Lord. We want to be judged correctly. We don't want to be judged with the rod. But then also, you know, again, in the case of like Kat Kerr and others, you have to look and see how other people are viewing your judgment against others. Because if the person you're judging is so far gone that they are just absolutely an apostate, they're a reprobate, they're a false teacher, they're a false prophet, your judgment really is not for them per se, but for all the other people watching. It's not even right measure, but it has to be the right kind of judgment. Can't be mocking, can't be provoking and making fun of. It has to be in a sincerity of you know, gentleness and love for these other people that are watching. So, yeah, just going back to a prior example, too, you know, when people say, oh, you're deceived. You're deceived and you, you need to stop this immediately. And I said, like, those are fighting words. And, and um, you know, they say, well, it's because I love you that I'm, I'm saying these things to you. You know, some people will dish out really hard judgment and, you know, come out with all the fighting words and say, it's because I love you. And... I don't know. You can really gauge whether it's really in love or not. You know, I mean, sometimes a very stern and hard rebuke will be in love, uh, but you know, other times it's it's really not. And I think I think the body of Christ can really see that. Out, you know, people that are watching the judgment take place, they can really see if something's in love or not. You know, are we are we trying to like ease into this and and really lead people to repentance, or are we just saying, hey, you're wrong? You know, especially on social media, where we don't know people personally, um, yeah, it, it can get pretty ugly on social media. So, uh, just felt really convicted, you know, just with me and my children, um, and how you know I want to be as kind as possible. I don't want to provoke them to anger. Don't want to be dis- uh, discouraging to them. Uh, and so, really, I I hope you relate to that, especially if you're a parent. And you, you keep it in your conscience and you think about these things as well as thinking about it whenever you're dealing with brothers and sisters in Christ. So hopefully you enjoyed this. Again, a little early morning video to start off your day. And hope you're blessed this weekend. This is Mike with On Point Preparedness. See ya.